time crystals. Sounds like something from Hogwarts, but it's actually solid state physics. Maybe not quite as mysterious as the name suggests, but nonetheless interesting. A team of physicists has now built the most robust time crystal ever and even figured out what these things could be good for. Let's have a look. A normal crystal is a regular configuration of atoms that repeats in each direction of space. A time crystal is a configuration of atoms that repeats both in space and in time. It oscillates basically, but the funny thing is that it's not a type of oscillation anyone expected or even thought of, except for Frank Wilczek, who proposed time crystals in 2012. Wilczek has already won one Nobel Prize and he's on a very promising track for a second one, either with the time crystals or with axions, which are a type of dark matter particle which experiments are looking for all over the globe. But today's topic is not dark matter, it's time crystals. Can we agree that physicists, if nothing else, at least have the coolest terminology? Time crystals are a new type of self-organization in solids, basically. They oscillate, kind of like some chemical reactions can, surprisingly enough, oscillate. Unfortunately, in physics, it doesn't look as impressive as in chemistry. I've really studied the wrong field to end up on YouTube. Wilczek's original idea was that some materials could oscillate all on their own, but it turned out that this isn't compatible with energy conservation. The material needs to be supplied with energy. But a few years after Wilczek proposed the idea, the first experiments managed to create the time crystals for real. In such experiments, the energy is typically supplied by shooting with a laser at some kind of material. Some materials materials then begin some sort of oscillation in response. This oscillation can even continue after the lasers are turned off. Now, if you poke a material with a periodic oscillation and you get a periodic response, that's nice, but kind of unsurprising. If I periodically complain about particle physicists, I also get periodic responses. However, you can also create time crystals if the energy that you supply doesn't generate a beat on its own. This is then called a continuous time crystal, and this is also what they did in this new work. A continuous time crystal has its own internal periodicity. Continuous time crystals have previously been generated in clouds of ultra-cold atoms, for example in 2022 by researchers in Hamburg, Germany. These clouds are typically made of a few 10,000 atoms. When the atoms are cooled to near zero, they create what's called a Bose-Einstein condensate. Yes, this guy again. If the cloud of atoms is cold enough to form a Bose-Einstein condensate, this means it has quantum properties throughout. This means in particular it can behave like both a particle and a wave. The researchers then supplied it with energy from electromagnetic waves and it responded. In this example they saw an oscillation in the number density at a frequency of a few milliseconds, nothing to do with the frequency of the radiation. So a time crystal. What makes these time crystals so interesting is that they display an entirely new physical phenomenon. Honestly, I think at the moment physicists don't really know what it's good for. There's been some talk about using it for quantum computing, but I can't really see how this would work. Timekeeping is a possibility, because every time you have something that reliably oscillates, you can use that as a pacemaker. But we already have highly reliable atomic clocks, and a cloud of atoms cooled to some millikelvin isn't going to revolution wristwatches, especially not if these things oscillate barely a few milliseconds in total. And this then brings me to the new paper. In this experiment, researchers from the Technical University in Dortmund, Germany, managed to produce a time crystal that lasted a full 40 minutes. That's more than a million times longer than the previous ones. Quite an achievement. For this, they used a semiconductor made from indium gallium arsenide, doped with silicon at a temperature of about six degrees above absolute zero. Then they shot at it with a laser. The material's spin states began to oscillate at a period of about six seconds. So it's not like the oscillation is a deformation of the material, it's a periodic back and forth of the spins. I know they sound somewhat academic, but I find this totally fascinating. It's just not what you expect a semiconductor to do. And that oscillation 
region was remarkably stable, as you can see in this figure. They also noticed that the oscillation period is very sensitive to changes in the magnetic field and temperature. For this reason, they suggest that such materials might one day come in handy as sensors in which one could infer changes in the magnetic field or temperature from the oscillation frequency. I'm not joking when I say Frank Wojciech might well end up winning another Nobel Prize. You see, it was a similar story with topological insulators. Those are materials with unique electric properties. For example, they might only conduct electricity on the surface, but not in the bulk. The idea came out of theoretical work by Thulas, Haldane and Kostelitz about 25 years ago. At first, no one had any idea what it might be good for, just like today with the time crystals. But in 2016, they won the Nobel Prize because by then the idea had found applications in some types of high-speed electronics. So it might well be that time crystals will soon find an application and Wilczek is up for another Nobel Prize. Are you looking for a new podcast to add to your weekly rotation? I've got just what you need. Check out Into the Impossible with Dr. Brian Keating. If the name rings a bell, it's because I was a guest on Brian's podcast not once but twice. In my humble opinion, both episodes are great, but I digress. Into the Impossible is a YouTube podcast that explores our universe within and beyond the known. Each conversation is a deep dive into the nature of reality from various perspectives. Brian's guests include some of the biggest and most controversial names in modern physics, such as Brian Greene, Stephen Wolfram and Eric Weinstein. And he has also spoken with Frank Wilczek. Brian has showcased his ability to communicate science in an effective yet fun way on Joe Rogan, Lex Friedman, Star Talk and the Royal Institution. And every now and then he also strays away from physics by interviewing experts from various fields such as artificial intelligence, neuroscience and philosophy. And trust me, every episode is as fascinating as it gets. If you're looking for an episode to start with, I recommend my most recent interview with Brian, in which I explain why I changed my mind about dark matter again. This show will bring you close to some of the brightest minds in science and it'll broaden your horizons. So search for Into the Impossible with Brian Keating on YouTube or check the link in the video description below and make sure to subscribe. You won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.